Hello, my name is Jason Chaco and I'm the Applications Marketing Manager at Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the RF amplifier and we're going to look at the gain of the RF amplifier using a swept superheterodyne spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. The, for those of you that may be new to amplification or, or RF testing, an amplifier simply takes an input signal and increases the amplitude of that input signal and then, uh, then sends it on its way. Uh, and there's a supply voltage here of 15 volts on this particular mini circuits amplifier. That's a ZFL1000. Uh, and here is the subsequent data sheet. Uh, and so we've got the RF in and we've got the RF out. And we're just going to give it an RF input and then measure the RF output. The instrument that we're going to use, as previously discussed, is a swept superheterodyne spectrum analyzer. In this case, this is the Siglent SVA1015X. This is a swept superheterodyne. It also does have vector network analysis capability. We're just going to use the tracking generator and the RF input, so this is just the standard spectrum analyzer portion of this particular instrument. Uh, but uh, the tracking generator, for those of you that are new to these types of instruments, the tracking generator is an RF source the frequency of the RF source sweeps with the input uh, of the detector that's used for the measurement side of this instrument. So, and in factory defaults, we can, which can be re reached here through the preset value, uh, we can see we've got a start value of zero hertz. We're going to sweep up to one and a half gig. This particular amplifier works to one gig and the tracking generator on this instrument starts at five megahertz. So we're just going to go start frequency five megahertz stop frequency one gig. So now we're sweeping from five meg to one gig. That means that when we turn on the tracking generator, we're going to have an RF output that sweeps from five megahertz to one gigahertz. The first step in this process, after we configure the, uh, configure the display, um, we're actually going to normalize the cabling and, uh, and adapter. So as you can see, we've got a cable here uh, for the tracking generator. We've got a cable here for the RF input. And they terminate in SMA connections, uh, M type on this side, SMA on this side. And the cabling is going to add a certain level of error to the measurement. And we can actually use normalization to decrease the effects of these, this error on our measurement. So we're going to have the, uh, the two cables and then we've got a, a small SMA to SMA, both sides of this, hold on a sec, both sides of this are SMA, uh, a small through adapter. So SMA to SMA, we're going to use this in place of the device under test. So we're going to uh, tighten the SMA lug and note that I'm tightening the hex nut. I'm not spinning the barrel itself. And that actually helps the SMA connections last longer. So you never want to spin the connector, you want to spin the hex nut. And then I'm going to connect the RF input to the other side of the through adapter. There we go. And now I'm going to turn on the tracking generator and I'm going to enable. And now you'll see a flat line at minus 20 dBm. And here you can see the tracking generator level is set to minus 20 dBm. And now I'm going to normalize. Normalize is going to mathematically, uh, it's going to subtract the original signal from itself, and that's going to give us zero. So again, I'm going to look at the normalized reference level. I'm just going to lower it a little bit. And now you'll see that there is a nice flat line at zero dBm, and, or zero dB, I'm sorry. Because we've actually subtracted it from itself, the original minus 20 dBm through the cabling so we've subtracted the signal from itself and now we've normalized it. So that gives us a zero. Now anything that we put in place of that we add to the circuit is going to be shown on the display. So any changes are going to then show on the display. So I'm going to disconnect here and I'm going to replace this through adapter. Actually, I'm going to do this in a specific order. So now I'm going to take my amplifier and I'm going to connect the RF input of the, detect of the spectrum analyzer to the output. And I'm going to connect my power supply, which I'll show here in a sec. Power supply leads to the supply voltage of the analyzer, or I mean of the amplifier. Sorry about that. So I've got it connected to an SPD1168X power supply. And so now I'm delivering a supply voltage of 12 volts to the amplifier, and now I can 
turn on the amplifier and connect the RF input. Now the, the sequence that I followed here was, refer, was referenced from mini circuits or referred to by mini circuits. Uh, they say connect the RF output, connect the DC voltage, and then connect the RF in, uh, RF in. So that's the sequence of events that I'm following here. So I'm just going to connect that tracking generator input. And you can see on the display, getting a nice flat curve at about minus or at about plus 17 dBm. If we take a look at the data sheet, we can see that at 12 volts of supply voltage, we have an expected gain of around 17. Uh, so that's uh, that's really nice, 17 dB gain off of the uh, off of that output. Now I want to compare this particular picture to some of the other uh, other information available in that graph. You'll see that there is a 12 volt supply voltage line, a 15 volt supply voltage line, and a 16 volt supply voltage line. So in order to see multiple traces on the display, again this is the gain curve for this particular supply voltage of this amplifier, uh, we can freeze this trace. So the yellow trace here is trace A. So I'm just press the trace button and now we've got trace A, B, C, D. We've got it written or set to clear write. That means that every successive scan is going to overwrite the previous data. We actually want to freeze that, so we'll just press view. Now we'll enable trace B. We'll hit that to clear write. And now you'll see that they're overlaying. Now I'm going to change the drive vol or supply voltage from 12 volts to 15. And you'll see that our curve has risen slightly. So our amplification of the input signal has gone up slightly by increasing the supply voltage to the amplifier, which is expected. And we can also freeze that. And we'll do one more, and we're going to do this at 16 volts, which is the uh, last curve. And you can see that is almost overlaying directly on the display. So we can go to view there. And so now we are showing all three supply, or all three amplification curves for the three supply voltages shown on the data sheet of this particular amplifier. So we can use this tool, the uh, spectrum analyzer with the tracking generator, to check out the performance or the game performance of our, amp or of our amplifier very easily. I'd like to thank you very much for watching the video today. If you have any questions, please contact your local Siglent office. Thank you and have a great day.